to like understand. So. You have to understand that in Europe, in Britain, in France, okay, and and in some cases in Germany, there are enclaves of Muslim refugees and people. In the United States, the refugees are spread all over the country, all 50 states. No, there are a lot of refugees. And they are made to feel like Americans. I don't know. From what I gather, a lot of the refugees are, like the Somalians are in one place. A lot of the people in Minnesota from the... The Middle East, they're, they're not all over the place. They're, you know, they're concentrating in certain areas. So, uh, but they are made to feel like Americans for the most part. But a lot of them don't want to be Americans. That's the problem. And you and you know this how? No, I'm not saying a majority, but uh, they come up as... Uh, <laughs> where do these uh, radical guys come from? They're American citizens, some of them. They don't want to be here, as America as it is. I'm not saying all of them. I'm just a lot of them. I'm saying, but there are some. I mean, they they're always talking about their, you know, they, there's a lot of radical talk in some of the uh, mosques. You know, we have to rely on people, you know. Yeah. Like they say, if you hear something, say something. I mean, look what's happening in Turkey. Basically, they're probably they're, it looks like there were there's a revolution there right now. The, the army's taken over because it looked like the the uh, what's the Nasisi? What's the name? I forgot. The head of the the president of Turkey was trying to change it to the rules so he's he's more of a dictator and was leaning towards a Katie, con- I think a Katie? No, an Assisi or something. I don't know. Oh no no Sisi, no, you're right. Maybe that's not an Assisi. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but he was leaning towards becoming more of an Islam Islamic state and more of a dictatorship and the government stepped in. And the government has stepped in, in the past and not the government, the military stepped in, in the past also. To keep a sectarian government and to keep a democracy going, they're like you know, they. It's like an unwritten rule that when the things go out of hand a little bit, they step in to try to take care of it. And uh, it's quite interesting. Yeah, but it didn't work in Egypt. Well, the why the army took over the not the sectarian. But the Muslim Brotherhood took over first. Yeah, and then, and then the army. And then they have Morsi. Yeah, but they, they got rid of him real quick with, with a revolt and the army. The army backed the revolt, so that was the end of him. Look, these countries, I hate to say, but most of them need strong leaders. And you know, some countries were not meant to be democratic. Not now, anyway. Maybe in the future. But the people aren't used to it. And they don't know how to handle it, unfortunately. You know, you know, they, they are, you know, you don't, I don't know what they're thinking of. They're thinking just because now they're, uh, was democracy? They're going to be immediately rich and be capitalistic and have a wonderful life. I don't know if that's going to happen. You know, I know it's not going to happen. The poor countries are going to remain poor, unfortunately. Not a nice thing to say, but I think it's the truth. What do you think? No. Uh, Dr. Mark had to run off for a second. And when he comes back, he'll be probably out of breath. Because uh, he didn't realize I was going to stop talking. I didn't realize that you were going to ask me a question. 
well, drinking my coffee. Always got to be ready. Rough and ready. But so, uh, the turmoil. The, uh, now, there's, now, France, there's, there's talk about France trying to uh, call for a uh, Article 5. Which is... I don't know. Declaring, you know, declaring when the, when the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not the European nation, NATO. When some of the members declares uh, Article Five, that means they want to declare war against ISIS, and they have to vote on it. Then all the countries agree to go in. Well, according to NATO, if one country does, if one country does, they all have to. Well, that, well, if that's what I don't know if it's I don't know if it's one or there's there's got to be an agreement. A couple of countries, but it, but they they had uh, O'Reilly, believe it or not, was and I only caught a part of it. He was actually interviewing Hillary, but the part I did that I did see. Was he asked her? He asked her if France does uh, declare the Article Five, would you support it? And that's when the start the the, the your dance started. First she tangled for a while, then she did a waltz, but she never answered. And she usually doesn't answer tough questions like that. She said, well, we, need, she need, we, we need more cooperation. We need more surveillance. But do you believe... I wouldn't the, be so quick to rush into another war, and this time against ISIS, because uh, ISIS is doing very well with their lone cells, you know, their sleeper cells. People who, you know, according to ISIS, you don't have to come here and fight. Just get into a car and ride into a crowd of people. That's what they say. They get inspired by what's done on the internet. What you know, they're very they're very sophisticated in the internet and promoting their uh, what do you call it? promoting the, you know their their program, and they're actually from what I hear not not seventy miles but thirty five miles away from the Turkish border, where ISIS headquarters is. And uh, well, don't forget, Turkey is where all the immigrants come through from Syria. You know, uh, Turkey, uh, Syria has been a haven for ISIS, and you know, Turkey is strategically placed right there between the Middle East and uh, in Europe. And Europe, half of Turkey is in Europe, half of it is the Middle East, and there's a uh, river. I'm not sure which river divides it. And that's basically half of it is Muslim and half of it is Catholic or Christian. It's a very interesting country. But as I said, it's always been you know, a very sectarian government. And that's what the people want. They... You know, you'll have another Bosnia on your hands where half the people are Christian and half the people are Muslim. But they've always gotten along very well. They've, you know, it's, because nobody, there's nobody that's really radical. So See, the, never... the the problem that the United States faces is that Turkey is at war with the Kurds. The Kurds are allies of the United States, and they're fighting against ISIS. It's not all the Kurds. Hmm. It's not all the Kurds. It is not all the Kurds. I heard you. What do you mean by that? There's a small section of the Kurds that are actually all terrorists. They do attacks. They act like terrorists. Most of the Kurds are fighting ISIS and don't care about the, uh, the struggle with Turkey as these guys do. The ones that are you know, fighting against the Turkish are not fighting the Kurds. I'm not fighting the uh, Syrians. They're fighting the, uh, the Turkish, and they uh, and you know they go in and they uh, have suicide bombings and everything like uh, 
ISIS does. It's not, it's not the same. I forgot what they're called, KKE or something. You're not talking about the Yazidis, are you? No. No, I'm talking about the Kurds. They, they have an organization called KKE or something. And, and they're, uh, they're pretty ruthless from what I understand. Also, I will say all the Kurds are pretty tough. They're great fighters. They are. Unfortunately, the, our government in the past has not really supported them. No, they haven't. Because they always claim what's part of uh, Iraq, and Iraq's got to give them the weapons. Iraq promised them weapons, but they never gave it to them. You know, they, they use mostly what they captured and hand-me-downs and whatever they could find, you know. It's a shame. You know, it's... I don't know. And all these uh, these cop killings are always bothering me. Cops getting killed in Dallas, cops killing other people, and this Black Lives Matter movement, which is getting money from Cuba and other countries to support their movement. I don't know. I don't know where they're getting money from. They said it. They were talking about different countries that support them and give them money. Some uh, rich... Cuba's our friend now. Yeah, some rich um, Jewish guy, I forget his name, gave them like 30 some million dollars. Probably Adelson. Maybe, yeah. Somebody was looking to start trouble. Probably Adelson. Adelson's always looking to start trouble. If you hear some of them talk, these people want to keep, like, like the jolly, like that guy who uh, killed the five cops. They want to kill cops. They want to kill white people. I saw this guy wearing a, a uh, that was a fake book, this really fat guy, big fat guy. Wearing, wearing a white, all white, and a black written all over, kill whites, kill whites, kill whites, from top to bottom. And the funny thing is, he was white. Well, maybe, maybe he's trying to commit suicide. Kill whites, I'm here, kill whites. I don't know, but you know, he looked white anyway. He may not have been, I shouldn't say that. But he shows that look at, and you know, I don't understand. You know, they, I, you know, I guess we could never understand how black people feel because we've never been in the same situations they are or have been. Well, you see, that's why they say we don't understand the Black Lives Matter movement because we're not black. Okay, and how could we know what it means to be black in a white society? We don't. Uh, you know, for the most part, people could hide almost anything except the color of their skin. So, I don't know. Michael Jackson did a pretty good job calling the color of his skin. I think I was darker than Michael Jackson by the, you know, by the time he passed away. Yeah, so I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure if that statement is correct anymore. What the thought is, you know, yeah, you don't like, you know, even if you're if you're half black and half white, and you look Caucasian, you're normally considered black. Well, that's that's very true. Just like Hitler used, you know, the analogy that if you were one eighth Jewish, okay, you were still considered a Jew and shipped off to uh, the concentration camps. Even if you considered yourself a German. Yeah. So I mean.